Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hatchcliffe. Hey, I'm right here. I'm sitting next to you the whole oh, gosh darn the time. It's still a pandemic, so I sit next to you during the start of the show. Oh. It's good to be here. How are you, Brian? I'm good. We're here again, the world famous comedy store. Another episode of Kill Tony on the Sunset Strip. Hey, look, everybody. It's the great Ryan J. Ebo right there drawing tonight's episode. There's the classic, the turn, the wave, and the point from Ryan J. Ebo. He draws every single episode of the show. All those prints are available at RyanJEbo.com. Every poster, every episode. He's been doing auctions over there. Go check it out. A lot of fun stuff happening. A couple new, uh, very limited edition uh, Kill Tony shirts he just released and other fun stuff as well. Um, and uh, yeah, very exciting. We're all stuffed up on Vito's Pizza, mm. the, my favorite pizza place and it, really one of my favorite Italian restaurants in all of the city that I love the most, Los Angeles, California. It's kind of ruined the pizza that I usually get now because I'll, I'll deliver it and be like, God damn, it sucks now compared to the you know, It's pizza. incredible. And I think I mentioned it last week, but I did it again since then. Every little like gathering I go to now where I know there's going to be like four or more people, I pre-order an entire party tray of ziti and it comes with an entire tray of breadsticks, an entire tray of salad. Hot and, salad. And I show up. Care. Actually, it's cold salad. Brian, it's been a while since you had a salad. Oh. You may have forgotten. Oh, yeah, that's what. right. It is cold. Yeah, salad is not served hot, Red Band. God. And, but I'll just bring this entire these entire trays of food to places, and people are like, what the fuck? And it, it makes people so happy. Mm -hmm. People just eat ziti and breadsticks. I mean, the breadsticks alone would stop a party in its tracks or start one if you will Ooh. but shout out to charlie and of course last week we were graced with the presence of the great grace from vito's pizza i'm all jacked up on delicious caveman coffee use the promo code kill tony save 15 percent we have amazing sponsors here i actually eat vito's i actually drink caveman coffee i actually love the comedy store and here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that brought you tonight's episode Hey, y'all. Now more than ever, you really shouldn't put off seeing a doctor when you're not feeling well. And I know that with everything going on, it can be difficult to put your health first. Seeing a doctor can be a real hassle. Plus, it's scary nowadays to go in there. There might be people in the waiting room coughing. It's frightening. That's why I use Plush Care. They make seeing a doctor so easy, I do it right from home. Plush Care provides virtual doctor appointments through your smartphone or computer. I just pick a time that works for me and book an appointment right online. I don't have to sit on hold forever to make an appointment or leave the house and sit in a crowded waiting room like Tony just said <laughs> and be exposed to who knows what. With Plush Care, I can be diagnosed, treated, and even have a prescription sent to the pharmacy of my choice if needed within minutes. Plush Care accepts most major insurance carriers and is available in all 50 states in the doctor's care. They're here to help by discussing treatment options and providing prescriptions as needed. And they're available anytime I have questions. And if you need a regular checkup or have questions about mental health, Plush Care doctors are available to help. Schedule an appointment today to discuss your treatment options. You know, I did this, Brian, and it was super easy. It turns out I had a little case of uh, food poisoning after eating some diabolical sushi, <laughs> but I was worried, and I took care of all of it over Plush Care. With Plush Care, I don't put off seeing a doctor, and neither should you. No more excuses. Make your appointment today. Go to plushcare.com slash Tony. That's P-L-U-S-H-C-A-R-E dot com slash Tony. Plushcare.com slash Tony. When you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want random passers-by looking in on you. So why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. Did you know that your internet service provider, say Comcast or Verizon, knows every single website you visit? And what's worse is they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target you. Yeah, it's completely legal that they do that also. It's scary. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between the device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have. 
have ExpressVPN. And the best part, if you're using ExpressVPN, it's as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just fire up the app, click one button, and you are protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash killtony today. Use our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash killtony, and you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash killtony. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. One CEO, Allie, needed to hire for a multifaceted role at his wallpaper company, Walls Need Love. He was looking for someone who was the right fit for his team and culture, but his search was slow going. So he turned to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology identifies the right people for your job and actively invites them to apply, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's how Ali found Savannah Ray. Ali said Savannah's skills and experience were a great match for the role. Plus, she applied within a few days after he posted the job. Through ZipRecruiter, Ali has hired everyone from head of marketing to his sales director to lead graphic designer. But Ali's not the only employer who loves ZipRecruiter. That's right. A lot of them do. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself how ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster and easier. Try it for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. And we're back. What an exciting time to be here. We have the great Rick Kosick is here, everybody. Make some noise for Rick. You guys can clap your hands. Rick takes pictures of this show sometimes. He's my neighbor. A little fun fact for you. And he filmed uh, all the Jackass movies, all the Wild Boys, all the. He's a skateboard legend, right? Photographer. Yes, a skateboard photography legend. Yes, I forgot that part. He's a great uh, photographer, filmographer, cinematographer, filmologist, camera guy. Okay. The great, hey, look, the great Gino's here. This is a real who's who of the Kill Tony Ooh, family. Gino. Very exciting. The the uh, CEO of Speedweed. And never forget, he uh, played a crucial role in Kill Tony's continuation at, over at Better Box Studios uh, during some of the craziest times in the history of the world. And we are forever grateful for that. How about a hand for Gino, everybody? And you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it, but tonight is such a Kill Tony wild family night that for the first time ever in the history of the show, ladies and gentlemen, a graphic artist who I have been working with, it seems like forever, but I guess it's only been over a year. Uh, the great McVader is here for the first time ever, everyone. How exciting. All the way from beautiful Tennessee, we're happy to have you here. Welcome to the Comedy Store, an unbelievably amazing artist. Uh, all uh, all uh, internet graphics, it's incredible. Um, anyway, so let's start the show, shall we? Um, we have a guest tonight. This is one of my really good friends. This is a guy who I've even gotten closer. Yeah, have you the... been playing uh, a little golfy poo yeah, with him? Yeah, he's been teaching me some stuff, getting my swing right. This guy is an unbelievable golfer, an unbelievable comedian, a guy who I've always looked up to here at the Comedy Store. When I started here, he was already right there in the middle of lineups, killing it, a Comedy Store paid regular, famous for movies, TV shows, absolutely everything, but a true Comedy Store guy, one of my good friends. Everybody, make some noise for the great Court McCown, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> Not his first Kill Tony rodeo at all. He's been here a couple few times. I've judged roast battles with this guy. It's good to be here. Nope. Oh, let's get a little. Uh, well, juice there on we it. go. Yeah. yeah, it is good to be here now. Oh, there yeah. we go. <laughs> We're Red happy. Band, how, how are you, doing, you buddy? Good to see you. It's good to be here. And you've been, uh, we've been having fun. And since I became a golf addict during this pandemic, 
Uh, we've run into each other on at, over at the range, and we, you've straightened out my swing. I'm helping your swing a little bit. How, how is he? How is he on? He's that? actually not too bad. You know, I mean, it's Jesus, like Jesus, what a look, ringing endorsement! But I got it. I mean, you just started. It's the right? hardest sport yeah. in the world, and everybody thinks that they can get two or three months in, and they're going to be great. And it's just fucking. It takes years. Yeah, it takes years. But I did notice you got the Trump. Um, the Trump uh, sweatshirt on today, which well, is the fantastic. fans at home could not notice that from where the cameras are. But thank you for exposing <laughs> that, and our listenership fantastic. just went down fifty. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm actually glad that uh, you are listening to the show. I didn't realize you were uh, had a microphone. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome, Mr. President. I got this. Uh, I got this playing at your course, by the way. It's uh, it is a beautiful course here in Palos Verdes, and it's one of my favorite places to go. Thank you very much. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you, indeed. And and if if you get a chance, I would love it if you would just like put my name on a list so that I could play any time. Perhaps. What do you think about that? Wrong. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's just keep this fun train moving along. Court. I don't know if you remember this or not, but we have a band on this show. I'm. I've been. When I first started doing this, it was still upstairs, and there was no band. So now I'm like, I feel like I'm really part of Kill Tony. I love it. Well, the band every single episode commits to being different characters. We never know what they're going to be. They've been in the it. back getting ready. It took a long time tonight. Let's see what they are. I hope it's worth it. They're the best damn band in the land. They are the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, Jetski, Jesse Johnson, and Chroma Chris. Oh. Oh, my God. What in the world is happening? Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wow. Oh my God. Look at this. Wow. My goodness gracious. They made Jet Ski a freaking Christmas tree over here. Poor Jesse Johnson. What a what an what an interesting uh position you're in tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Santa Claus is here, everybody. Clearly pregnant with septuplets. A very strange type of fat. Hello, how are you, Santa? Have you been a good boy this year, Tony? You know me. <laughs> I do, you haven't. <laughs> Why? What have I done? Have you been watching me? Lots of coal, Tony. Lots of coal coming your way. All right, well, luckily I... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Luckily I'm a big fan of the coal industry, so I'll be able to resell that. Okay, Miss, not Mr. President, Mr. <laughs> Santa Claus. But Mr. President is uh, is here. You're a big fan of the coal industry as well, right, Mr. President? Right? Officially running for president of the United that's States. Not, that's not what I asked you at all. We love coal, don't we? We don't have victories. <laughs> that's not, again, again. This is like Trump doing his Biden impression. Nope. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. There, okay, thank you, Mr. President. Jesse Johnson's here. She's a Christmas tree. How are you, Christmas tree? <laughs> Great to be here, standing tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, you have the official Jetski Johnson ornaments on your tree. I love that. Oh, you saw those. <laughs> yeah, handmade by Jesse Johnson, available at jetskijohnson.com. I bought two. Last week you bought three. Oh, that's right. I, <laughs> I, uh, I bought two more. I meant to say that wow. means that brings me to five total. <laughs> that's another lump of coal. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Claus, behave. Hello, Mrs. Claus. Looking actually just like all of Joel's female characters, looking extremely beautiful for some reason. I'm hot as fuck. Wow, Mrs. Claus, what have you been? Wow, are you pulling out your breasts? I might if you act nice. Oh, is that why? Wait, do you have a lisp? She sucked on too many candy canes. <laughs> wait, That's right. Not... Sometimes your tongue just gets stuck like this. How do you think we made this marriage work for so long? <laughs> and uh, it appears as if though we. <laughs> <laughs> Appears as though we have one of the most frightening elves of all time here, everybody. Chroma Chris. Hey, everybody. Nice to be here. <laughs> oh, hi. What's your name, Elf? Uh, my name's Alfonso. <laughs> ha ha. 
It's just Santa turned the North Pole into a meth lab. Look at this it crew. Is. This is wild, man. This is a fucking party. Jet skis, a Christmas tree. We got the real Santa Claus. I have. I, I, this is your first time on the show. Am I right, Santa Claus? It's true. It's so wild. Nothing better than a nothing better than a late uh, September, early October appearance by Santa Claus. Well, it's about to be my busy season, so I made some room in my ah, schedule. Okay, that makes sense. You look great. You ready? Uh, so we have a special Christmas episode. Christmas with Court McCown. Uh, everything's here. Everybody's here. So let's start the show, shall we? This is another episode of Kill Tiny. We have, uh, we're still inside with a very, very extremely, um, uh, basically no audience, just the uh, close uh, production team here at Kill Tony. But with a few predetermined signups trying to squeeze some new people in here that have been waiting a couple weeks or so to get in and they're finally in the bucket so let's start the show you guys ready for this oh yeah oh boy that that reminds me of back when we used to have uh 500 people in the room you know what let's not start the show with uh with a bucket let's start the show with something special uh this is one of our regulars ladies and gentlemen to get things started here tonight this guy One of the longest tenured regulars in the history of the show famously was sent over 20-some pairs of shorts last week. Uh, Absolutely insane. And uh, did a little little runway um, strut for us, testing out each pair, some of the pairs of shorts. And he's back again. One of my favorite comedians. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. With 60 seconds uninterrupted. Here he is, William Montgomery. Uh, I wish they'd attach an iPad to a shake weight so we could form a tight-knit community. Um, I'm kind of jealous of Peloton, people riding their bikes in their living room, cheering each other on. Meanwhile, I'm in the basement with a shake weight looking like I'm training for the dice rolling Olympics. Uh, The best part about a shake weight is that you lose 12 pounds in one square inch of your body and you have the fucking most ripped muscle inside of your right elbow. Meanwhile, the left elbow looks like Danny DeVito at a nudist resort. Uh, Whenever I pull down my underwear, my dick looks like Danny DeVito auditioning for Taxi. (laughs) Uh, But seriously, I don't know if y'all heard, but Casper the Friendly Ghost died a couple days ago. All right. Just hit the button, Redman. You just wanted to, Why don't you just say thank you? That's my time or thank something. Thank you. That's my time. There you go. Hey. And the Christmas tree be holiday. Yeah. Christmas music. Love it. You love Christmas, right, William? I do. I uh, grew up Jewish, actually, but I... Uh, you didn't grow up Jewish. That's the crazy part of what you just said. I know I was going to try to make up a story about how I grew up Jewish, but then we uh, uh, got into Christianity and got big into Christmas. That's right. Uh, Speaking of Christmas, you were given uh, tens and tens of gifts last week as the shorts really started pouring in here at the Comedy Store. I was. I have some new ones on tonight. That is a beautiful new pair of shorts, buttons, zipped up. Everything is working. It's operational. Do you have a belt on those? No? Oh, you do? Wow. Look at you, you class act. Incredible. These are actually, for everybody wondering, I, I actually wear a size uh, 38, not a 40. So all those 40s I threw away. But it was really sweet of y'all. You did not throw y'all. away 40s. It was really sweet of y'all. Yeah, what did your, uh, what did you your... should get those 40s back, buddy. You should get the 40s <laughs> yeah. back. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it's a little, the belt's a little tight. They're hanging a little bit. Let's there. just not say when tight. you lifted your shirt, I thought, game recognize game. <laughs> <laughs> So, William, what did your have you spoken to your family or your girlfriend about the new shorts? What are they saying? What's the report? From they the love people? it. Yeah, it's big. It's everybody loves it. Your girl probably likes how your butt smells better now. Oh Jesus, Red Band! My huh? God. Watch it, Red Band. Oh, yeah, yeah, huh? You're, you're gonna end up with cold. I'm always watching. Oh. Wow, I bet you are. That's creepy when you say it like that. <laughs> Christmas tree. You don't watch anything, do you? No, but he is really always watching. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hang out a lot? You hang out with Christmas tree a lot, Santa? 
Uh, supposedly, but she gets a little freaked out when I try to get underneath her. Whoa, look out. What does Mrs. Claus think about that? <laughs> I'm too busy dealing with the cameras in my bathroom. Oh, look like that lisp really cleared up, miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm glad that the candy canes finally wore off. So, William, we have really exciting news for you. I don't think you're going to believe it. Is there anything else crazy that happened this week? I actually saw a movie for the first time in many years on Netflix yesterday. I don't know if you all remember Coneheads. I highly recommend it. It's a perfect movie. How about what happened with Danny DeVito this week? Uh, You noticed Danny DeVito in something? I did. That's where the Danny DeVito stuff came out. Um, What's that? This is yet another pair of <laughs> shorts, believe it what or not. What size are they? Uh, wait, you're going to have to find out. Okay. We're going to find out right now. Ooh, this Perfect. I do need some more. Those are a nice color, too. They remind me of your old shorts. I like these. What size are they? Do you see there? I can't tell. Oh, my goodness. You know what? You got new shirts, too. Look new shirts? That. Yep. New shirts. What do these say? I don't know. Read it. Open it up. What Kai happens. What does it say? I don't even get it. Oh, this is where we find out William doesn't know how to read. <laughs> Size 38, Volcom. Oh, That's a good perfect. brand. Volcom's nice. Love it. It's a Christmas giveaway. I should give these to Santa Claus to give to you. Little did I know. Proof again that we had no idea ever what the band's going to be. You want to open that up and <laughs> give it to him? Please, thank you. What are the odds that Santa Claus is here on a special gift-giving day of I can't Bill believe Tony? It. How many boxes do you have? How many more shorts do I have? Ooh, this hey. one's exciting. It's it's postmarked to Billy Montgomery. Billy Montgomery? Wow. Hold on. We got two pairs in that one. Kill Tony is now an unboxing show. Oh, oh. Wow. And a Merry Christmas to all. Another pair of shorts. Thank you so much. And Alan Carr's Quit Drinking. Perfect. <laughs> Quit drinking without willpower. Two things <laughs> without willpower. Is that how does that says? work? <laughs> Santa, check this how out. How does that work? And a giant <laughs> bag of candy. <laughs> oh God! Oh, wow. perfect! Oh, look at that. So you know, I like my cookies. Instead of drinking, you can eat a bunch <laughs> of candy. Oh, and you also got a letter here. Could be money. Hey. Oh, let's see. Could be money, could be anthrax. Nobody really knows. Yeah. Breathe in real it? hard when you open that. Yeah, Santa is opening the letter. <laughs> I want to see if there's cash in there. That's yeah. all I really care about. Perhaps Hold. a check, a cashier's check. A love letter. <laughs> what is that? Is there a check, a gift certificate, a bumper sticker? Find out how not to receive the mark of the beast. Wow. Oh, religious <laughs> Mark shit. of the beast. It is a letter from a crazy person. <laughs> there may or may not be enough room for this on Red Band's podcast studio table. It's for Red Band. Oh, oh, there you go. It's for Red Band. Postmark to William oh, Montgomery. Thank you. Took a shortcut there. <laughs> <laughs> so, William, you got a few new pairs of shorts, some new clothes. What do you think? Can we squeeze in a little, uh, a little another uh, runway session today? Yeah, you want to? Yeah, let's do it. Go backstage let's do it. and we'll call you out in a bit. There goes William Montgomery. Here we go. We're going to do it again. Happy holiday. Yeah. Rocking around the Christmas tree. It's another episode of Kill Tony. Okay. This should be fun. This guy made his uh, debut on this show just a couple months ago. Was back a month ago. And now he's back again. He started on this show. I believe he's only done this show. He lives up uh, in near Modesto, so he's real white trash. Always has a real interesting story for us. Last time he told us that he was strapped, and he pulled a strap out of his pants. Let's see what happens this week. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Trey Peacock. Here he is. Everybody loves you tonight. Santa Bay. Oh, Trey Peacock. I love Mexican food and taco trucks. Taco trucks sell the best Coke. That's a fact. But when I say that, there are two different thought processes you could have. And you're right. Um, you might be the kind of person that hears that and thinks about enjoying a nice cold bottle of Coca-Cola. Or you could be the kind of person that hears that and thinks about staying up for three days straight, jacking off and staring out windows. 
Either way, you want the good shit, you got to get it from a Mexican. You know, you got to love those taco trucks. They say you are what you eat, and I actually am Mexican, but I guess lately I've been eating too much white bread. I'm a lot like a slice of bread. I get a really jumpy around toasters, but it's not that I'm actually afraid of toasters. It's just whenever I'm around them, I think I'm going to have a stroke, and not like the good kind on my dick, like the bad kind. Thanks, I'm Trey Peacock. Hey, look at that. Look at the chimney tonight. Santa baby, Santa, Santa baby it is. Santa baby, hurry down the chimney tonight. There you go. Hi, Trey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I have a lot of questions about that set. Is that, okay. it, look, let me tell you something that I've learned. 36 years on this planet, never trying cocaine once. Is that people that do do cocaine don't ever invite me to anything i don't ever see them doing it they don't i don't even know they do it people my other friends are always like oh you didn't know that your buddy's like a real big cokehead i'm like what i just thought he had a great sense of humor like me until five or six a.m i thought people were just wired that way but uh so i don't know anything about cocaine is my point my question is this is that true that taco trucks sell the best coke well, the joke was Coca-Cola, but yeah, that's the premise. <laughs> oh, okay. well, being someone that's done a lot of cocaine, yeah. I will uh, say that Mexicans sell the worst cocaine oh. on the planet. <laughs> that's true. Take that, true. Mexicans. <laughs> Here, what's the what race has the best cocaine? Oh, Is it the uh, Asians. I'm going to guess white people. White people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I'm think, uh, dreaming I, of I a just, white. I just Christmas. never got any good coke from uh, Mexico. That's just all but I it's I, got I, real I, cane I, I sugar got that in gasoline it. smell. You know what I'm talking about, Trey. Oh, yeah. The yeah. fertilizer smell. The fertilizer yeah. smell. Now, Trey, you do a lot of cocaine, correct? Yes, sir. Hell yeah, you do. When's the last time you did some cocaine? About 20 minutes ago. Are you serious? Wow. You are the yes. laziest looking coke head I've ever seen. <laughs> I balanced it out. You look like you just did a bong rip. That is so interesting Both. that you did it 20 minutes ago. Now, that's wild to me does it even affect you anymore do you have to do cocaine just to get up to base level would you say yeah my parents gave me adderall when i was a kid so uh-huh. yep i'm fucked up how much do, how much do you do it like typical day like are are you going through just like a, a bump or two or are you going through like a whole bag nah i'll an eight ball lasts like maybe a week a oh, week how oh, much geez. is an eight ball <laughs> Pussy. Pussy. Yeah, it's not a lot. Eight I'm 100 pounds. I do an eight ball in a night. Yeah. What are you talking eight ball, about? Eight Come hours, on. right? It's called portion control. Heard of it, Red Bam? <laughs> is, uh, is, like you've uh, ever done that. Is uh, what, uh, what other drugs do you do regularly? A little bit of meth, right? Just a touch? Just a little bit. Now, so what are we talking about with meth? How often do you do that? <laughs> uh, Seasoning, that's when I'm I call working. it. What? I use that to stay up when I'm working. Okay. How often do you work? Every day I'm not out here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now what do you do to come down? Weed. Wow. How Have you ever tried heroin? Nope, not yet. <laughs> Is that well, an invite? Well, be a good boy and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you have friends that do heroin? Uh, I know some people. Not really friends, but... Enemies. Yeah. Do you ever yeah. do any pain pills of any kind? Nah. That's no probably pills. a good thing. You have a highly addictive personality? Yes, sir. Do you smoke cigarettes? <laughs> yes, I do. How many cigarettes do you smoke a day? Pack. Pack. So that's yeah. 20 cigarettes a day. Something like that. That's fun. I respect that. Thank I you. I was a heavy smoker myself. Okay. Now I just now I just use uh, this vape pen. And I also go to Lucy.co and use their amazing nicotine mm. gum. Absolutely incredible. That wasn't a joke. I don't know why you did a rim shot there. It was like a stinger for the promo that oh, you just... Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so what else? What else have you tried? Have you ever done anything like uh, any any Fentanyl? like unorthodox drugs, like huff paint or anything like that? <laughs> Eat something weird? Keyboard cleaner? No, sometimes when I'm working, I use acetone. So sometimes like I'll be using acetone all day and breathing that in. That'll fuck you up. Yeah. Acetone. Yeah. yeah it gives what you it, cancer. Oh, wow. <laughs> what does that make crazy. you feel like? Just lightheaded. Do you have any? Do you think you have any uh, signs of cancer setting on? Do you have any? Like you have like a lumpy back or something? Fucking fine, no. My back cracks when I breathe in sometimes. 
Okie dokie. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> well, COVID's not going to be your biggest problem, yeah. we can see. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Things I Only Think of in My Nightmares. Uh, <laughs> my, your back cracks when you breathe in. That's your coup. Has Dr. Koo visited you recently, Tony? No, but I have gotten a lot of feedback uh, since that episode oh, yeah. aired from people that analyze dreams and whatnot. And it seems to, uh, it appears as though people have told me that um, they're saying that I, I I believe that doctors aren't saying all that they know. Perhaps it's wrapped around the current uh, coronavirus or things like that, that my beliefs are, are that the doctors aren't saying everything, that their jaws are wired shut and it's pouring out of them like we are only getting pieces of the information that's a couple a little thing that i read the other day from someone that sent me something but mm. interesting stuff uh trey what else have, what else have you been up to since the last time we saw you something funny happened to me today when i was working uh-huh. uh i had to go to home depot and get some parts i was uh getting some pipe fittings and i went to uh, the, I the self-checkout like. yeah yep self-checkout and uh one of the fittings wasn't wasn't coming up so a lady had to come over and and she was beautiful i was like oh this is a beautiful girl and so she's helping me the one fitting that didn't come up it's called a nipple so she's there (laughs) yeah so she's there looking through all the nipples asking me which one and it's not there there's long nipples short nipples and so it was kind of awkward and we finally got it and i went i just thought that was kind of funny she was all blushing like she didn't know what it was either. <laughs> Trey, be honest. Did you get a boner? <laughs> yes, I did. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Got a boner. I'll let it mind. slide. Oh, my Thank goodness. You. In our house, we call that a Yule log. Oh, wow. You have a little country accent now, Mrs. Claus. That's right. I'm all over the place. I got a lisp, an accent. Sometimes I talk like this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's just say she's traveled with me all over the world and can't pick a voice or a region. Wow. <laughs> North Pole, South Pole, you're bipolar. As long as it's a pole, I'm all right with oh, it. Wow. Mrs. This Claus. Bloody Mrs. Claus. This is a Fall great character. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit, we've seen that. What before. did I say about the gag reflex, Mrs. Claus? I'm sorry, I'm only human. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Trey, is it true that uh, that wh- what happened after uh, the episode uh, last time you were on, when you had the strap on you? <laughs> yeah, I was driving home and got another speeding ticket. My what? goodness. Yep. And the wild part of that that you told me is what? That you had... Oh, I didn't have the strap, or I did still have the strap on me, but I yeah. didn't get caught. I had tree. They took my tree, and uh, wait, he, what? 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 Tree? You had a tree? Christmas tree? <laughs> you, yep. You had a tree in your car? Yep. What do you think about that Christmas tree? You're this guy about weed drives with trees in his car. Like you guys just go places together? Yep. <laughs> That sounds really nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you had marijuana in your car? Yes, I did. And the cop never found out, right? No, he did. He, he was like, you got weed in here. Like, after he was already riding me up for speeding, he came back and he's like, all right, you got tree. And I was like, yeah. So he's like, all right, well, give it to me. So I got it, gave it to him. I was like, it's under an ounce, though, so I'm good. I know that. So he goes back and weighs it and comes back and he gave it back to me. So I was like, sweet. Did I've you never have any cocaine tree. in your car at the time as no, well? No, I didn't. No, where was that? In your asshole? Something like that. <laughs> you have a big hat. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, your ears are underneath your hat. I have a small head. Is really yeah, what you look like a Hey Arnold character. <laughs> Thank you. How small is your head? Really small. Let's this see is the it. Can we size. see how small your head is? Whoa! <laughs> look at that tiny head. <laughs> look at that. That is a really. Do you, does everyone in your family have tiny heads? No, nah, it's just me. I'm. I was a preemie. That's why. <laughs> oh, it was. Your mom has some. Probably has some wild habits, right? What is? What oh, are, yeah. what You're <laughs> a premature ejaculator. That doesn't tell us much about. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So tell us about the things that your mom's into. Well, uh, my mom's actually pretty pretty straight edge. She's a Christian, but uh, she was an alcoholic for a long time. When but you, when she was pregnant with you. Uh, probably, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Now that small head thing makes sense. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Trey. Well, it's always fun. Well, you're from Modesto? Yes, sir. Have you ever been up to Modesto Court? I have been to Modesto. Scary place. It's very, very scary place. <laughs> he looks like he's from Molesto. Whoa. <laughs> Santa just Take dropped that. a bomb on you, dude. You look like you've been molested, bro. Is the Modesto the one with the, the casino that has a, has a mic up there that Sam Tripoli used to run? 
I don't know. If that's the double the, tree? Uh, Temecula, maybe. maybe. Two trees. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's just where, like, the whole, like, the whole thing came down in, like, 2000, where the whole crash started. The, the land, all the fucking real oh. estate crash started. Modesto right. and Fresno. and It's real. Real high-end property up there, right, sir? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scott double, Peterson double and George Lucas. If you could be the, uh, if you were the head of tourism for Modesto, look directly. But General Bogus, can you get behind that camera for a second? And uh, I want you to zoom in on his uh, tiny head a little bit. And I want you to give a pitch straight to camera on why these people should visit beautiful Modesto, California. Straight to that camera. You're the new head of tourism. Introduce yourself. Say, I'm Trey Peacock, head of tourism. And here's why you should visit Modesto and then ramble about it. Go now. Go. I'm head tourist Trey Peacock. And we're here to talk about Modesto. <laughs> Y'all should go see 9th Street. That's where all the crack hookers are. But stay off 8th because that's where the cops run down. And uh, stay off of 12th because that's where all the gangs are in. <laughs> no, you told them where to avoid. Look at camera and tell them all the great things about Modesto. Go ahead. There's a movie theater. There's taco trucks. There's a lot of coke. You could get weed from any of the clubs out there. You could get it on the street. That's 9th Street too. Come visit Modesto anytime you want. You're welcome here. <laughs> what was that final line? Come visit Modesto and we tell you how you welcome here. What was that? I don't know what I said. <laughs> that I was, was rambling. Beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. And that is, that is perfect. Uh, that is everything great about uh, Modesto. So... <laughs> If you're into any of those things, stay off of 9th Street, avoid 8th Street. The cops are running on 12th Street. We got great Coke, great taco trucks. We, you, you come here, we know you welcome. <laughs> yep. All right, Trey. Well, fun times. Thank you. Congratulations. This is your third time ever doing stand-up? Yes, it is. There he goes. Trey Peacock, everybody. Appreciate right it. On. There he Trey. goes. Trey Peacock chasing his dreams. <laughs> Taking a break from the cocaine and the map to grace us with his presence here on Kill Tony. A young... Trey, how old are you? 21 years old, already addicted to meth and cocaine. How about another <laughs> hand for Trey, everybody? These are just some of the wild characters here. Have you ever been offered coke? Like, have you been around it before? I mean, yeah, people... I, I've been sort of around it. I've definitely been offered it. And uh, people are always like, really surprised that i don't i don't do it it seems I think it's like you I'm like would skinny and i'm always up late night and you're, you're a writer a lot of writers yeah. take it yeah you'd probably like it too much yeah probably probably Definitely. i enjoy i you know and another thing is people are always like no it's great for when you get drunk it brings you back and i'm like but what that's what that's what i get drunk for right. i get drunk to get drunk like that's the feeling that uh, feels good so i want to stay there but you've done a lot, right, Court? That's like part of your like legacy back in the day. You're you were like you know. I I experienced quite a bit of cocaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were you were a you were a movie star in the uh, what was in that? the eighties? Yeah, but yeah, it was very. Uh, but I started doing it in the seventies. Oh wow! So I was like, oh, I was hipster really, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> but it was a it was really expensive back then. Like it was extremely expensive, but it was really good. Mm -hmm. Now it's like Modesto. It's mm. like cut with shit. It's not as good. Mm. Um, it's been don't a while get him started on the Mexicans. No, no. No, no. All right, Santa. It's the Thank Jews. You, it's the Jews that ruined it. You, no. um, when Mrs. Right. Claus was younger, she stole cocaine from a friend and then helped them look for it. <laughs> yeah. And she, how, how did that end? Turns out they lost it in the snow. All right. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Uh, this is uh, this young lady's first time on the show. Met her uh, a week or two ago. Told her to swing by again or told her to swing by to come back and perform. She wanted to perform then. She's performing now. The name is Carolyn Georges, everyone. Here we go. First time on Kill Tony. Here we go. To town, it's Caroline Georges. I'm a stripper. <laughs> um, no, I, I, it's, um, it's great being a stripper, but I do have to live with the stigma. I get slut shames for being a stripper, which is wrong because... I'm uh, uh, sluts don't get paid. Uh, I'm a whore, so <laughs> I get it right. You know, if you're gonna shame me for anything, um, I'm not. I'm just kidding. I'm not really a whore. I don't really like labels, um, but I, uh, yeah. So, anyways, but um, people do ask. A lot of friends will ask me, like, you know, do you do anything in the VIP? Like, do you do extra in the VIP? And 
And uh, I always just tell them, like, no, I don't do extra in the VIP. I'm a Christian, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but I, as far as, like, slut-shaming goes, like, the logic of it is just really beyond me. Like, what did I do that's, like, so wrong by fucking guys? Like, did I fuck you? Like, did I suck your dick and make you come? Like, what's, like, about slut-shaming that I'm the bad guy, you know, in this situation that I'm being shamed? That's my time. Sorry. Hey, a little hey Caroline Georgia. Hey, all right. Wow. There's a lot in there. Coming to town. Caroline George's first time on Kill Tony. How long have you been doing stand-up for? Uh, three years. Three years. All of it here in L.A.? Yeah. How long have you been a stripper for? Uh, since I was 18. Since wow. you were 18? Yeah. Wow. So How old are you now? It's been about 10 years. Stripping. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Where at? Where at? Um, all over LA, um, like the body shop, I used to run into comedians all the time at the body shop <laughs> when I worked there in college and stuff. And, um, you know, but like kind of deja vu's, you know, like, but then also like some of the smaller clubs and stuff, like did like one day at Spearmint Rhino and we got out of there really fast. And, so no shame in your game. Yeah. You're a proud <laughs> stripper. What's the most amount of money you've made in uh, one night of stripping? Uh, six grand. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. What did you, what did Santa like, just got real interested <laughs> right now. <laughs> Looks like Somebody needs to tell me what you'd want for Christmas this year. Uh -oh. <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> wow. Wow. We have another. Uh, it appears as though we have another fan of cocaine here I'm on Kill Tony. Uh, how long have uh, you been doing drugs for? Oh, I mean, I don't really. Honestly, oh. it, it gets. Oh, it's kind of old hat doing drugs if you're a stripper. You know what I mean? You get kind of. It honestly, like, kind of, because clients want you to do it with them sometimes and right. stuff. And so it's like you kind of have to like learn the tricks of how to talk your way out of it and stuff. But at mm -hmm. the same time, like, you know, it's. Yeah. Any cool of. stories, like a famous celebrity that came in there? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. go ahead. Um, name names. Name names. No, no. I mean, sometimes family men will come in and you'll be like surprised. Like, oh, that guy, like, you know, that celebrity, like that actor. And he's like, a like you know, has like a wife and, and his kids and stuff. And his name is... Uh, no. He's on a really, really popular HBO show. He started in a really popular HBO show. And, and what oh was the show about? Uh, the Sopranos. No, I, I, can't, I can't say. Gandolfini. I cannot say. No, I, I want to protect their identity. No, I know. But. I don't want to. I don't want to throw anybody under the. Uh, no, um, but like Republicans come in too. Like, there's like a couple like the Republicans, like strippers, like Republican pundits. You, you a couple mean like of those politicians? Those. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yes. <laughs> but that makes. Or sense. comedians that wear politicians' pullovers. Right. <laughs> Any good comedy <laughs> stories, like comics that that came in that you could definitely tell talk about. Comics. That's how it works. Republicans go to strip clubs and Democratic politicians go to pizza places that have pedophile <laughs> filled basements. Yeah. <laughs> Those goddamn reptiles. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, famous comedians, anybody like that? No, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to say who, right. but just again, like, that you makes know. sense. I don't want to do that to anybody. Anyway. You know. Now, um, so you've been stripping for ten years. Is there an end goal for you? Like, what are you? Lo what do you? What's your? Uh, what are you saving money for? Um, I, I, I just kind of, um, I came to LA because I kind of wanted to have an exciting life and stuff. Where'd you come from? I come from Alaska. Wow. Yeah. My goodness. They don't even have strip clubs in Alaska, do they? Oh, yes, they yeah. do. Oh, they do. Oh, oh, they, have. they got a great Big strip business. Club. Big business. Wow. Not where I'm from. Not I work at Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> it's got an ASS in it. You didn't get that. I no. get it. <laughs> Good one, Mrs. Claus. Really? Mrs. Claus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, when you say they don't have them where you came from in Alaska, what do you mean exactly? Um, I'm from like a really small town, like it's thirty thousand people, really tiny. Wow. Were you yeah. born in an igloo? Um, no, in a it, hospital. Oh. Igloo Azalea. <laughs> okay, oh. this is one of those moments where uh, Mrs. Claus needs to take a breath. Oh, she's dancing. <laughs> Mrs. She's Claus, dancing. easy. Have you we've been drinking seen this too much before. milk It's been again? a few weeks since we've seen uh, <laughs> the the, uh, ca the that character uh, get a little uh, over amped up. What'd you do before the show, Mrs. Claus? Anything different than usual? Maybe Just a red suck Bull a lot of dick and have a bunch of eggnog, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Mrs. Okay. Claus, I tried to tell you that was an eggnog. All right, everyone. So, Carolyn, do your parents know that you're a stripper? Yeah. And what do they think about that? Um, my dad does my taxes. Oh, sweet. You know, uh, yeah, I, like I it's, it's. I'm more kind surprised of... that uh, strippers do their taxes. Um. Yeah, we do. Our, we do. We're we, we're Americans, you know. We do everything that everybody else does, you know. 
Um, that is I the most that. American <laughs> thing I've ever heard answer. in my life. A That's stripper a... going, we are American. <laughs> well, you know, we're not. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, so your dad does your taxes. What does your mom think about it? Um, you know, what happened was is that I had a, a, a falling out with a girlfriend <laughs> and then so she told Red, my parents. Red Red so like excited a... that there's a stripper on the show. He just, <laughs> the, his jewel pen just flew up out of his hands in the air and he tried to catch it and it fell. Mm. <laughs> oh, don't make that noise mm. ever again. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to mm. vomit. Okay. So what does your mom say about um, it? A friend of mine actually like lashed out at me and told my mom kind of, you know, when I, when she didn't know and oh, stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah. And so, uh, but my mom, so my, my mom just sort of like told me like, she was like, you know what? It makes sense. And she's like, then she sort of said like, it's kind of a compliment. Like I have the personality for it. So it's like, she's very passive aggressive about it. Like right. she's never going to What be. does she do for work? Um, she's a housewife. Oh, so nothing at all. She couldn't even muster up being a stripper. <laughs> You hear that, Mrs. Claus? <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Claus, how do you earn your keep? Well, I have. first of all, I got a serious question, if I may ask. Go ahead. When a stripper dies, do you dance uh, half-masked? Okay, there you go. Great question. What, what else do you have to say, Mrs. Claus? <laughs> hey. Okay, what is the elf? I'm, I'm seeing the elf <laughs> using the microphone. I want to see what uh, elf has to say. I think we could definitely use someone like her on our North Pole. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, my God. Oh, well, that's the shit you like? Yeah. Alfonso. That's the shit that gets laughed? Yeah, jokes and, jokes and references, Mrs. Claus. I said I had a serious question. Yeah. All right. Uh, the, 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 the word Alaska having an, the, the word, the sound ass in it doesn't that's really. Funny. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll ask her for another joke. <laughs> so, <Fuck you. laughs> wow. Mrs. Claus, the language is getting a bit much. <laughs> so, COVID has to be really hard on you because there's no strip clubs. What have you been doing to like make cash? That's a great uh, question. I got on unemployment, oh. and um, yeah, and then I'm uh, working part time at a dispensary and stuff. So, oh, cool. I have to ask you a question. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Have you had boyfriends while you were stripping? Yeah, yeah, lots. What's oh. that like? Are they they get jealous easily? Are they, um, they, they? My guess is this. My guess is the first uh, the first date and the first couple weeks they're like, no, nah, it's fucking cool. You do yeah, you, I do me. Exactly. I'm real independent. And then uh, two three weeks into it, yeah, they start hitting you up like, hey, you said you were gonna be done. Or, uh, yeah. Start coming to the club and just sitting at the bar staring at you. <laughs> yeah. I know right. that <laughs> dropping their jewel <laughs> pen and making noises like. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> Right? Are we? Are we? Welcome right about back this? to the yeah, live reading of the autobiography of Brian Redpath. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's they're all good. They're they're carefree in the beginning, and then they start to get jealous real quick. I used to lie and say I was a nanny, or say like <laughs> you know I did other things. So I actually had like I used to ha- lie about. It. I used to be really ashamed of it, and so I used to lie about it. Right. And um, so I'd have like full on relationships, like. You know, six months, seven months long relationships. They had no idea. Wow. Yeah. And then when they find out, <laughs> what, what did they do? Only one found out. Yeah. Because w- he did my taxes. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> so That's why you got to let daddy do the taxes. taxes. <laughs> <That's> uh, so <laughs> what happened when he found out? Can you give us a real, real breakdown of what that was like? What are all these receipts for $1? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank well, you. All right. After a question, can you tell us what that was, uh, what that was like when he found out? Um, he just kind of was, he asked me about like, you know, expenses and that sort of thing. And then also like, cause I, he was like, I thought you worked at an, at an and I, I told him I worked at a, as a receptionist at like, sure, at, sure. And, uh, so on the checks that you get at strip clubs, it's like, they have like suit, like a uh, fake names, you know what I mean? Like face, fake business names. Right. So he was like, what's stars entertainment? You know, like, what is this? Right. But so, when, when you told him, when you're finally like. I'm a stripper. Well, he knew, and then he told me, and then um, he told you you were a stripper. No, well, he told me he knew because uh, of he looked up Stars Entertainment and, where I was getting and, my checks, oh. and um, he was like, "That's a, so he thought I did porn at first, and then right, and turns out it was okay. It was just stripping, but then um, you know, what is that? That only lasts about another month, right? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. It's hard, but it's okay. When you're not stripping, what are you into? You have any hobbies? You like to make pottery or things like that? You into a mathematics, science, nuclear energy studies? 
Um, just no, just comedy, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I I went to film school. I got a degree in film, oh, and sweet. then I taught film appreciation for a while. I guess that's something I did for like a year and a half. And Where then, at? Um, I don't want to say. I got oh. fired. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. I guess. Why'd you get fired for? For showing them rated R movies. Oh, oh damn. yeah. It was at a it was a high school, and I thought they were fine to watch them and stuff. Like, but what kind of rated R <laughs> movies are we talking about? Like, well, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with Schindler's List. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. <laughs> you like, showed yeah. Schindler's List at a high school? A double feature with striptease, back to back. No. <laughs> they, didn't know I, they didn't know I was a stripper either. They didn't know I was stripping either. But, um, right. yeah. But right. Uh, also, yeah. That's interesting. Do you right. ever just, uh, you know, s- sit down by the fire and string popcorn together? Sure. I... No, I'm never, never. That was that. a great okay. moment right there. That was, that was a uh, really nice moment. A lot of people have uh, <laughs> said the Christmas trees ask all the best questions. I respect the stripping, but it terrifies me. Anytime that I get undressed, I'm immediately killed. Because you're a tree. Yeah. So do we sometimes. Absolutely. Um, Somebody go and get her. She's have you ever had a really? Like a have you ever had a really dangerous moment in a strip club? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, ooh, but I that's wanna, I no. I don't. You don't want to no, know. Yes, like, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Come on, you don't it. have to name names. Yep. No. Uh, names. Okay. I guess this one time, this I I was I didn't really know what to do. Like, oh, I I there's this girl and she had been trafficked, and um, and so okay. she was she, yeah. So I, I so it's it was LA. Really, the traffic's was, bad. I mean. Yeah. So helping her and stuff <laughs> was really ball. you know was really freaky because like you know you didn't want to get the person that trafficked her mad. You know what I oh mean? Oh my and god! So, so what'd yeah, you so end up doing? We got her an Airbnb and then she came to work with all of her stuff and then she went to the Airbnb and then she yeah. Then she went back to the no she, trafficker. Oh, well, I know. I think she she escaped and then she went to Hawaii. She was from Hawaii and so you know like a a trafficker oh, was like I right. want to make you a model that kind of thing right. and then. You know, right? Started, you know. Wow, that is yeah. so. It's not just girls going to college stripping. There's trafficking and uh, and and all kinds of other fun, interesting stuff. Santa, what the fuck are you doing over there? Get involved. <laughs> I'm a flyover. <laughs> now you're a beautiful girl. You're what, 28 years old, something like that. Are yeah. there? Uh, have you seen a lot of? Uh, have you seen in your 10 years there? Have you seen a lot of strippers like grow old and have a tough time letting go of the game? You know? Um, yeah, like there's one woman. Like she was, um, like <laughs> Billy Idol's girlfriend. Like she was. Like, you know, when she was really young, like 18. And so she had like all these photos of them and stuff. And she's still like stripping. And she was stripping when she met Billy Idol and stuff. And so like, and so she's, yeah. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, but she's had like clients for like 15 years. You know what I mean? That like, she's like. She's got regular. Destiny, you've tore both of your ACLs. (laughs) It's time to hang up the hat and the shoes. Okay. Your colostomy bag is showing. (laughs) Okay. That's uh, not a pan- <laughs> that's not a panty liner. It's a colostomy bag line. Do you know Malice? Malice? Yeah. Uh oh, this is the part where Red Band starts dropping stripper names. Oh my god. She's great. I think I do know Malice. Yes. How do you oh forget god. a Malice? No, you, you don't do forget a Malice. Malice. No, she she, <laughs> she she has the whip. Right? She's famous. Yeah, yeah with the, the 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 mohawk and oh. she's like a Hollywood legend. Oh, I, yeah. I think even I know her just from yeah. like hanging out. She's like Naughty tattoos shows. on her. Yep. Yeah, exactly. she's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, fun times, Caroline. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming on and teaching us so much about the art of stripping. This was so fun. Thank you so much. Awesome. There she goes. Caroline Georges, everyone. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Man, I can't wait till the ice house opens up again. You ain't lying. <laughs> You ain't lying, my friend. That one would be an instant book mm-hmm. right there. Uh, so we've uh, we've met a new person there that hasn't been on the show before. Your next comedian, a regular on this show. Uh, this guy is a true anchor of the show, holds it down every single week. Uh, absolutely love this guy with all my heart. One of my really good friends. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the great David Lucas. Here he is. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, white people can't cook worth the goddamn. Uh, there's only one thing white people can cook better than black people, and that's meth. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers got some uh, ancient recipes for that shit. I like when I, I like to uh, put my stomach on girls' backs when I'm hitting the doggy style, kind of like a paperweight. 
Don't let her ass go nowhere. Like, where the fuck you think you going? Uh, men don't mind if women are fat. Like, I do a lot of online dating, so of course I meet a lot of fat bitches. But when I meet you and we go out to eat, show up with some fucking personality. Don't just show up fat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I hate going out to eat with fat girls. They they act like they don't eat shit. Like, this bitch is sitting there picking that french fries. Like, bitch, you know damn well I know that you eat more than that. I eat more than that. So quit playing with yourself. What was that? Was that it? That was oh. a different cat for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's really Ray, Ray, Ray. off the uh, normal format of the show. That's a different cat. Are, is there? Are we being in, are we being invaded by different cats? Wait, did you just say no? You keep saying no. <laughs> yeah, huh? Wait, what? Where? What is happening? Okay, all right. This is. Absolutely the dumbest shit that's ever happened yeah. in the history of the show. I was San Diego. I saw oh, okay. you I was San, San Diego. San Straight Diego. into San Diego, which nobody listening knows about. But go ahead. You, well, just, you, just, performed you, just, in, have... you just headlined in San Diego yeah. this yeah. weekend. Killed How was that, it? Killed that shit. Oh, okay. Good. The, well, there you the, go. And the owner, he uh, messaged me because he thought I was talking shit about the club. But I... So I wasn't talking shit. And he actually paid me extra Who? For the owner of the club? Yeah. Okay. He messaged me because he heard that I wasn't happy. But you know, like... He put nine people up before me. So, you know, when something like that happens, you have to address it as the headliner. No and doubt. I, and I'm like, it's not that I was talking shit, but if you have nine people before you as the headliner. Obnoxious. You have to make it no to the rest. You have to acknowledge that. Beyond obnoxious. Right. <laughs> did you, and you had no idea that there was going to be nine no. people? Like, no. And told, how long was your set? I did 30. He told me to bring. Uh, so I brought a feature and I was like, okay, there'd be probably a local opener. And a fucking right. host, and right. not fucking nine. What was the reason for the nine people? Uh, I'll tell you off air because I, I, I love I love the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. So let's talk about stuff, David. You were talking about uh, something that stood out to me is if having <clears throat> sex with a woman doggy style, you like to put your belly on their lower back like now, a paperweight. Now I don't understand that obviously because I'm built like a rail, and normally if I'm having sex in the doggy style position, I'm the one that is uh, in the doggy position. I'm on bottom. <laughs> I'm on bottom. You, know you, are, bro. you like um, to spread your legs. We know that. That's right. And dildos come out and then whatever <laughs> anybody wants to put in there, they can put in there. <laughs> right now I have uh, $4.50 in quarters in my butthole. Damn, nigga. You got uh, <laughs> enough money to, to, to help the chain shortage we got in America. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So here's my question. If your belly is on their lower back, is there ever a time where you go perhaps too far out and then back in and you're like, ow! Your like belly gets stuck between your their butt. <laughs> Does it fall down? And nah, you I ain't never had in? no shit like that, bro. No, I don't I know how it no works. Because like nah. it seems like that would happen. Nah, nah. One time, my belly button kissed Mrs. Claus's butthole. Is that true, Mrs. Claus? That's right. What did that fe- <laughs> What did that feel like to you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. There's the, there's the one <laughs> fart noise. So, yeah. David, what's been happening uh, this week in your life other than going down to San Diego? What else has happened? I fell in love with acai bowls, bro. Oh, Number look at that. Yeah. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, Ten years. There you go. Yeah. That's right about when it happens. Yeah, bro. I, I had an acai bowl and fucking peppermint water today at Creation on 3rd Street. What is an acai bowl? I keep It is the it. whitest can... shit. I don't even know what an acai is. It. It's from Brazil. Ooh. <laughs> Mrs. Claus knows her. It's a berry. It's from the Amazon rainforest. And they blend it up with ice and put some bananas. It's It's a very healthy treat. The jiu-jitsu community is very into it. Indeed. It gives you a lot of energy. (laughs) There's normally granola, bananas, things like that inside of it. It tastes like you're eating ice cream pretty much. like sherbet. Some of it has a lot of sugar in it. It tastes like ice cream, Red Man. It tastes like a fucking acai bowl. Ice cream tastes like... No, it tastes like sherbet. If you ever had it, it tastes like a fucking sherbet. It tastes well, like a fucking it, it raspberry has, sherbet. It has the texture of sherbet. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't actually like. You could equate taste. everything to an unhealthy food if you want. Exactly. To. It's still not <laughs> healthy, man. You know how much sugars in that shit? Y'all know pita bread tastes like pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's fruit. It's fruit. It's natural yeah, sugar. Right. Yeah. Whereas ice cream and Fructose, sherbet yeah. is different types mm-hmm. of uh 
Uh, yeah. Yo, the shit is good, bro. And uh, processed sugar. White people don't hit it on a lot of shit, but they hit it on that acai bowl shit. Absolutely, they hit it on the head. No, with that we shit. do. White people are good cooks, by the way. You you don't count Italians as white in your uh, fuck no. That's right. ethnic. Yeah, I agree. White people can't do. I don't name a white dish that come from like grilled cheese. That's a good one. That's a nigga dish. Oh shit, Hamburg- <laughs> That's a nigga's dish. Hamburgers. Yeah, hamburgers. Milk and cookies. Hamburger. Steak. That's a black dish. <laughs> the only thing white people can probably be accredited with is goddamn tuna casserole. Ugh. Tuna Shit. casserole. Any good. type of casserole, that's white as fuck. T bone steak. I don't think I've had a casserole in 15 T-bone years. T bone steak sounds like a black guy, <laughs> yeah, too, man. Like, yeah. T- hey, what's up, T bone? Hey, what's up, my nigga T bone? No, no, no. You took that from the white people. Come on. I was in prison with a man named T Bone Steak. So yeah. Tony went to prison just for the showers. That's right, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I go there and uh, they're, they're like, "All right, you have to hit the showers." I'm like, "How many bars of soap can you give me?" Right, because I want to drop it all. I'm gonna drop soap like Red Band's jewel pen with a stripper on stage. <laughs> Whoa! Girl, <laughs> drop it to the floor. I love to see your booty go. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Santa. All I want to do Thank you, is Santa. Watch it Thank you, Santa. Santa. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> What's my boy today? That nigga's a handsome white guy. Say it's Nick. Court McCown. Court McCown, my it's nigga. good to see you, buddy. What's up, doggy? I'm doing good. Nice man. teeth, full beard. I hope I have that much hair when I'm your age, dog. Hell yeah. Look at that. I, I, like Are when you I was younger, I used to want to be white so I could do my hair like like the little the thing the Burt Reynolds that shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. seventy eight years old. Yeah, you just wait. <laughs> yeah, nah, you probably like honestly because white people age bad because y'all had us in slavery. You probably like thirty six. No. no, no, no. He was doing co- he was doing cocaine in the seventies. Oh shit! So you might be older. You, you're a white dude that took. Like, he so- actually knows the dad from Teen Wolf that we always talk about on the show. Yeah, well, I always reference. Uh, like even tonight, <laughs> I sort of see it in Chroma Chris. Like I, I see the dad from Teen Wolf in a, a lot bit, of people. A little bit, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Where's That's the basketball? True. We had it last time. Elf, how you doing back there? By the way, you having fun this episode? Yeah. Fantastic, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Elf's hard at work making yeah. toys for all the boys and girls. What's your favorite Christmas uh, memory that you've ever had? Shit. Uh, you know what? I'm going to let you think about it. Let's uh, let's check in with your brother in cursive, everybody, trying on some new clothes for us. Here he is. It's the great William Montgomery, everybody, with a new pair of shorts. Wow. No, you can't. <laughs> William, William, you can't. No, no, no. You cannot. You can't talk. Shout out to Mike Peterson from Modesto. He loves these mesh shorts. Right. These are new mesh shorts. Uh, Oh my goodness. Wow. Have you been solid have you been doing something at all? (laughs) Physically? (laughs) Have you been working out? out. What have you been doing to work out? All right, well then do some push ups for us. Here's some push ups from William Montgomery proving Oh, the hat goes backwards. And here he is. Wow. That is that's wow. louder yeah. than everything else. There we go. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely incredible. How about some sit-ups? Can you do sit-ups, William? Enough push-ups. How about some sit-ups? I think that's what would be really interesting to see. Here's William. He's going to try some sit-ups for us. Here he goes. <laughs> Segwaying seamlessly into sit-ups. This is the moment of truth here. We know the guy can do push-ups, but whoa, oh, yikes. These are, he's only lifting up his head, really. <laughs> only, only, hold on. Everybody stop. That's enough music. Hold on. <laughs> William, wait a second. Only your, see that? yeah, only is, only. See that, Rick? Wait a second. What's that lump on the top of your head? Oh, my God, he does. He has a. Why? Have you always had that? No. What there's, the but fuck? Forget, Forget about the ball. No. It's, there's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a, so a, where, it's an incredible yeah. lump. Where his bald spot is, there's actually like a bubble. Yeah, like Wi- a, William, has that always been there? Yeah, it's spina That's not, no, that's not spina That's a bifida. snow globe. How long has that been there, William? Really? Well, he never takes his hat off, so he might be right. All right, there he goes. William Montgomery, everybody, with a little showing of the shorts. Go throw on another pair of shorts. We'll bring you back in a second. I thought about it, bro. Yeah. Uh, so it was like Oof. 2002. I was favorite like, Christmas. Memory. I was. It was like 2002. I was like in the sixth grade and shit. And uh, 
my mom had bought me a computer, and this is when I found out Santa Claus wasn't real. Because you take I, that back. Uh, it was my favorite Christmas because I got a lot of shit, but it was also like heartbreaking because um, she couldn't figure out how to hook my computer, so she had to call my uncle. So Christmas for me didn't start till like 1 p.m., and I was sad as shit. And then later on that day, she told me Santa Claus wasn't real, that she buy all the shit. How old were you? I was in sixth grade, so like what, 11? Damn. Yeah. I have a story just like that. I asked <laughs> for a computer. I think I've told this on here before, but I asked for a computer. All my friends had more money than me. Uh, they all had computers at their house. And like you'd go and you visit, and you could barely do anything on computers at the time. But right. everybody else had one. I was the last kid to get one, and I asked for a real computer. And sure enough, this giant presence underneath the tree that morning. And I'm like, no fucking way. I think we did it. And I open it up. And uh, it was uh, it was a monitor and a keyboard. And I noticed that there was like a printer attached to the keyboard part, like the back of the keyboard was a printer. And uh, it was a word processor. Oh, yeah. And you couldn't do a fucking <laughs> thing on it. You couldn't upload, download. There was no games on it. It was Damn. literally just type. It's and type you could paper. see what you were typing on the screen. And you had the choice to either print or not print. And that was it. It was a fucking whamboozle. I'd rather would have had nothing at all than this stupid fucking word. I got the same thing. I got a Texas (laughs) instrument. It was like a T computer that had nothing to do with internet or anything. My first computer was a gateway. 20 inch monitor. I I used to work there. Wow, I got bootleg Power Ranger toys. You guys' childhood sounds great. (laughs) Bootleg. They're from the Swap Me. They were like Mexican Power Ranger toys. You guys are bitching about a word processor. Mrs. Claus, Mrs. Claus, <laughs> why would you get bootleg Power Rangers toys? I thought you were hundreds and hundreds of years <laughs> old. <laughs> but bootleg Power oh, Ranger yeah. toys. Yeah. Yeah. Power Let's models. just say I saved her from a scarred past, yeah. Tony. Were they like beige fucking weird colors or what? They, let's just say <laughs> they didn't fit right. You know, I got the whole the gun that's supposed to <laughs> click together and be the mega gun. It just... The pieces didn't really click in properly. Vamo, vamo, ranger! <laughs> All right. Uh, David, that fun ranger. times. Uh, another fun uh, appearance. Yeah, I'll be on a... Uh, I got an episode uh, soon. Uh, I was... Uh, I got an episode of a concrete podcast coming out soon. I'll be filming that in Tampa, so it'll probably be out in like a month. Sweet. Or two weeks. So, yeah. Awesome. Doing that shit. Doing... Uh, yeah. David Lucas... Is funny, right? David Lucas funny on IG. These niggas know who I am. Of course. There he goes. The great David (laughs) Lucas, everybody. (laughs) You guys got got word processors and I, I got an 8 track player when I was in 6th grade. 8 track. An 8 track you know, player. Honest to God, I rather would have had the 8 track player even in fucking 1990 or whenever it was uh, that I got that thing because it was just all all it forced me to do was my homework. Uh, yeah, which I yeah. hated more than anything. It doesn't sound like that thing really did anything. It didn't do no. a fucking it was just thing. A, it was and just you know a what? Typewriter. In retrospect and almost immediately actually, I felt bad for my mom. You know, it was one of those things where it's like, fuck, where you really realize like, oh, you're poor and, you know, your mom like might not be that smart. Did she see? <laughs> could she see the disappointment in your face? Dude, I mean, I. <laughs> Is I, it like one of those things where you open it up and then you're like, I'm. Oh, oh yeah. Fuck. Oh, immediate. You. Oh, I would <laughs> complain about it relentlessly. I mean, I was I was such an asshole. Wait, I got you? a used. I got a used typewriter one year. So. Word processor, not so bad. All right, well, I mean, I'm also fucking a legal resident of the United States. You're right. The North Pole just got uh, incorporated into America. You're right. So I think it's different, right? Mm -hmm. Americans are supposed to get better Christmas presents than illegal immigrants (laughs) with their (laughs) rip-off Power Ranger toys. Easy, Tony. (laughs) Wait, when you lift up your mustache like that, all right. We add some green to Santa Claus. He's Mexican all of a sudden. <laughs> green and an eagle. Okay, I'm excited yeah. about this one. I got a message from this guy, and it was very, very compelling and interesting. I do believe that this is his first time um, on the show ever. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Jeff Reyes, everyone. Here's Jeff. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. 
Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, here he is, Jeff Reyes. Uh, hey, everyone. I just uh, I uh, just got separated from my wife. Um, it's been about a month. We're living together still. It's pretty weird. Um, I feel like I look like I got separated, maybe. Uh, maybe I sound like it. I don't know. But I... Um, <laughs> But I, uh, uh, one of my sons just recently got uh, diagnosed with, uh, I have, have seven year old twins, twin boys, and uh, one of them just recently got diagnosed with autism. Um, and uh, I feel like he got it from me um, for obvious reasons, I feel like. Um, like sometimes, I don't know, like sometimes I, uh, like I live in the wilderness, like in a wilderness kind of area. I'll just, uh, I'll see a rabbit and I'll chase it, like a, Simulate like a coyote chase, you know, even make the sounds <laughs> Just chase and then and I almost like in my head. I'm thinking like I'm probably saving this fucking thing's life, but also it's, I, I don't know Wow, Jeff Reyes I love it Honest to God one of my favorite performances of the night so far and this is your first time doing stand-up Oh, uh, yeah, first time ever. Wow, first time ever performing anywhere ever. And there's something about you that really sort of, I think, naturally commands people's attention. You're not, you don't really project, but it's not that you're underperforming. It is just the right amount to sort of get people to lean forward and really listen to what you're saying. Uh, and very, very, very interesting life you're living right now. That's all true, right? Recently divorced this month? Uh, no, not divorced. Uh, sorry. And I think just right now, like how my voice almost cracked. Uh, that's why right. I don't project sometimes because at a certain like level, it <laughs> like kind of just no, it's breaks great. Through. It's like, like I yeah. said, it was it was great. But I um, wasn't like uh, we're, we're still together. I mean, like I've been married for like I guess together for since like thirteen years, twelve years. Okay. Um, we just kind of separated like a month ago, but we're kind of still living together. It's still like very kind of mutual, like uh, yeah, no. respectful, like uh, it's uh, still like. A, Trust me, I get it. Yeah. So it's been a month. What caused the uh, separation, if any one thing in particular? It just sort of grew apart over time. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think that's it. I think we're both. I mean, we got like married pretty young. Yeah. Did she um, give you a word processor for uh, Christmas? <laughs> 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 uh, no, this. Uh, she did uh, uh, on Valentine's Day. Uh, <laughs> she did tell me I looked like like Captain America, like pre like kind of like soldier, I guess. Like I don't know. Mm, what the I fuck? Know. Huh. That's I think she meant to kind of like joke, and but it, it kind of stung a little bit because it was like. So how many kids yeah. do you have? Total, uh, just twins. Yeah, just the twins. twins. Were you surprised when you found out that you were having twins? Uh, yeah, we just uh, I mean, like um, we just expected to have one, and uh, it was just they're identical, so it's just kind of like. The egg spontaneously splits. Well, that's probably pretty stressful on the relationship, having twins. And now you said one's autistic, so that's... Uh, yeah, one has autistic. And How? only one's autistic? Are well, we sure well, about this? I think we, we don't know, but one of them like, kind of has like a lot of signs of it, and they're identical. They say like 80% of identical twins, if like one has a diagnosis, probably the other does. Yeah. Wow. So, so that, the other one's just not showing symptoms yet? Uh, I mean, like some, but it's like, I feel like not enough to maybe like impact them, like... Um, Right. What's the uh, one that is autistic? What's he doing that uh, is autistic? Um, he's just, I mean, he's gotten like a lot better, but he just he just uh, kind of takes things like very literal. Like for sure, like whenever you like laugh, like he doesn't understand like the like the context. Like if you feel like he does something cute and you're like, oh, or he says something kind of funny. And, right. Uh, and you laugh, he'll like kind of like swing or even hit you. He's gotten a little better at like hitting. Oh, okie dokie. So, um, yeah, that's that's that. But he's also like uh, he's just like I mean like he can like play with Legos and just like hum to himself for like three hours and just like hum, 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 and just kind of like wow his own little easily world entertained of, yeah. the kind of kid that you could give a uh, that you can give a uh, bunk ass Power Ranger to and he'd be able to have fun with it for a while. That's fun and uh, yeah anything like that. Ooh, Christmas tree has a question. Yeah, bright side of the separation. Two Christmases. So yeah, <laughs> yes! that's great. That's great. Double the tree. Gonna have twins, twin twin trees. So, uh, you guys sleeping in two separate bedrooms or something like that? Yeah, kind of like um, like where we live. There's like other, or our house has like a kind of a separate kind of loft. So mm -hmm. it kind of works because as long as we're not like killing each other and we can like, because I think that's maybe like why 
it, it hasn't worked or it didn't work, it's because I think we're so kid like centered too. Almost right. like we kind of have to be. I think we're both like special ed teachers. Okay, oh, who cheated? Wow. What are the odds of that? Two special ed teachers. Well, that's good. And uh, you have autistic twins. Look at that. That's like hitting the uh, the uh, special lottery. It's bringing your work home. <laughs> do you have Do you have any? Sp- uh, Give it up for Mrs. Claus for that joke. What did she say? Yes. Bringing your work home. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Christmas tree, go ahead. Uh, do you have any special ed moves in the bedroom? Huh. Yeah, special bed. Some good moaning. No, I don't She's like, spit on my back, and you're like, I'll slobber. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why would she ask Why would she ask him to spit on her back? Kink. E. <laughs> oh, <laughs> frightening. You, you say you live in the wilderness. Do you like, is that true? Do you live in like a forest? It's not the wilderness. It's more just kind of like the foothills, but, I mean, we get like a, like it's really right up against the, Kind of like the wilderness, so we got like rattlesnakes, like coyotes, like. So special ed, you got the kids, you're separated. What do you like to do for fun? How do you escape from it all? Uh, I mean, I'm a big like hooper, like basketball player. Oh I, shit! I, I mean, I was playing like daily, like at the gym, but uh, it just like once it got shut. You down. You said you're a hooper, so I, I, I really like, believe you. You don't uh, have a basketball in your car, do you? I thought about bringing one, but then I was like, Tony's going to make me dribble up here. And I was like, that's... That would have been so awesome. I mean, I'm not a great dribbler. I'm Man, I wish you had a basketball. Anybody have a basketball on them? About two yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I, I like to draw a lot, like graphic design. Like oh, that's that. cool. Um, that's fun. But basketball, I'm, my guess here, I'm looking at you. I know, uh, I know a little bit about sports. My guess is that you're a real hustler out there on the court. Am I correct? Yeah, you're I a point to, like, guard. I have to depend on the hustle because of athleticism. Of course, like but that. but I mean, I'm, my guess is that you're extremely good and you surprise people on the court. Yeah, I think like like when I play against like people, they're like, oh, like that, like that white boy can only show in this. Right, last pick, and then next thing you know, you're doing a layup right in fucking T Bone Jackson's face. Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> that's fun. What was your childhood like? Oh, just like a mess, kind of filled with like yeah, just uh, divorced, kind of like parents. I think both parents were married and like divorced three times apiece, and I was like, yeah, right. Did you get any off-brand toys for Christmas? Uh, no, it was all like name brand Mattel. Ah! <laughs> that's right, I got you. Yeah. Very interesting. Hey, where, where were you during my fucking Christmas? What? Yeah. So now you're recently separated. You think your uh, you think your wife's banged anybody yet? No, like we haven't like really like uh, kind of like talked about that. I mean, my therapist, like I've been like in therapy recently, right? Um, and like she, uh, she, uh oh, yeah, what are we therapist. talking about here? Could she be? Uh, you ever think about having sex with your therapist? You ever no, get the no, case of the Tony Sopranos? It, it's it's not like that. Yeah. It's not like that. It, it ain't like that. No. But I mean, sure? I asked her and she was like, like, can I ask you something? Have you ever been unfaithful? And I was like, no, like, I, I mean, I haven't. And she was like, well, I've never cheated. I was like, that's like, which is true. I have never done that. And it's like, um, huh? Well, you might want to cheat when you see the incredible styles of William Montgomery in new shorts. Here we go. Here he comes. Here he is. This is incredible. Oh, wow. Khaki shorts on this one. This is for all of you that are into. Uh... Why is it so fucking hot? Do you see me sweating? What would you do if you walked in uh, to your place and uh, your wife was having Don't sex with this? Bitch. Oh my god! I would submit. Be nice. What? Submit. Perfect. There you go. Bitch. What would you do to him if he walked in on you having sex with? Uh... I would have sex with his bottom. Wow, you would his, his butt? He would submit to me. Oh my goodness. He would submit. If you were going, if you were, hold on, William, (laughs) William, I have a question for you. Let's say you had sex, (laughs) let's say you were having sex with his butt and you felt the urge to have an orgasm. Where would you finish? Where would you finish? Uh, Where would, where would you shoot your shot, William? There you go. Very honest answer there (laughs) by William Montgomery. He would pull out and shoot on your back. Right on your back. Oh my goodness. William's got a lot of energy right now. Those Will- are very aggressive shorts he has on right now. Yeah, it's a very di- well. I think that the the gym shorts were like with that? the elastic made you a little bit less, a little calmer. I oh, think man. that I think the button is is riled him up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. huh? All right, there he goes, William Montgomery, with another new pair of shorts. He's going to be back out again soon, any moment now. Uh, if 
if if if they wrote a book about you, Jeff, what would be one of the most interesting fun facts about you? Like something that you've done or something that you've accomplished or perhaps a special skill other than basketball or something like that? Like something a real fun fun fact. You perhaps you saved somebody's life before? Or uh, something like that. I did. Uh, there was a kid's birthday party a few years ago, and uh-huh. there was like a goat, like that was choking. It was like a petting zoo. Yeah. Somehow he had like kind of twisted. The his... goat was choking. Yeah, the goat was choking. He had yeah. like a collar on. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. It's PTSD right there. Yeah. So it was like, so it was this, um. So he was like choking, and then this girl, I, they put like some like fifteen year old girl in charge, and she came inside the house like in tears. Uh, you know, the goat, the goat. And we went out there. The thing was like foaming out of the mouth. It's like eyeballs were kind of like bulged out of its head oh and my god I, I went i had like a knife but I, it was just so, so tight and i was like holy shit and then i realized there was just like a little clip there and then like the goat was fine he just kind of like was just like laying with his tongue out for like 10 minutes and he got up and then he was like wait what was the clip what do you uh, mean it was like a like the little push clips i don't know like on a collar it's like you oh like so the collar was too tight yeah uh, he just twisted it around like uh, around oh my like, god yeah. It was wow. pretty scary, but I was pretty proud of myself. And then I was kind of—I celebrated with like a double double, and I was just like, "Ridiculous!" <laughs> hey, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Look at that. Saved a goat's life. Get yourself a hamburger. Oh, yeah. No, he got rebounds and points. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you so much. Very compelling story and an excellent set for your first time ever. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm a huge fan of you guys. I appreciate you guys kind of putting on the show during this pandemic because it's like a lot of people like me look forward to it. So I, I love it. Well, congratulations for a fan of the show. Oftentimes they come in here and they uh, they struggle with the set. They struggle with the interview. But uh, but this was this was awesome. Very compelling stuff. I hope you'll come back and do it again sometime. For sure. Thank there you. he goes. The great Jeff Reyes, everybody. <laughs> on to the next one we go. Hey, oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, all right, we're in for a special treat right now. The name that I just pulled out of the bucket is the stuff that legends are made out of. This is this guy's first appearance on the show since or during the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been wanting it, and now you have it. This is the return of Kill Tony icon, Mikey McKernan, everybody. Here he is. Thank you. Mikey McKernan, everybody. I like to text women you up, but I do it in the morning to see which ones like to sleep in. (laughs) Boo. Ah, ah. I don't like to travel because you always have to meet a rival. (laughs) Boo. Ah, ah. They're there every time. They say it doesn't cost anything to be narcissistic, but I'm pretty sure you have to pay a few selfies, and then I go boo-ha. <laughs> Just hanging out with my folks during quarantine. Dad told me about how they met. My dad had a mattress store next to my mom's meat market. They humped, owned, opened a sandwich shop. True story. They got married right in front of the chip stand. They had to exchange onion rings. <laughs> boo ah, ah. Had to read a lot of conspiracy theories to get out of the house today. Great to be here. I like to find people who are more freaked out than I am. You know what conspiracy theories clean their ears out with? Q-tips. <laughs> Boo. Ha, ha. I'm still doing it. I love it. Doing it and doing it strong. The great Mikey McKernan. I forgot how much I missed that. The return of Mikey. And we got... The, we got the trademark. This was not like going to a Pink Floyd concert and wondering if they're going to play comfortably <laughs> numb. He did it, and he did it throughout his set. The famous boo-ha from Mikey. I have to, forever. That's what the people want. You're giving they them what it. they want. That's how you fucking sell tickets, my friend. Is that your merch? Because if so, that's awesome. Oh, no. <laughs> shout out to Todd Smith. This is his uh, clothing company. It looks like you. <laughs> Super cool. I have a question for you. Sometimes I take, uh, sometimes I get shit on uh, the internet because people will be like, "Oh, come on, you, you out that they, they were joking and you asked them about their joke," and like, of course that's a joke. But I have to know, how, it was any part of that mom and dad meeting story true? Did he really have a mattress store? Was she really at a meatball? Would you say meat market store? That meat is a true story. Wow. Did they really get? Start a sandwich shop? They sure did. Wow. Did they, did they, in, uh, but did, they, County. did they really get married there? They had Ooh. married right in front of the chip stand. Wow. 
My it's mind real. is blown, and I'm so glad I asked. I, I know. You could have very easily been like, uh, no, that was a joke, Tony, and then I look like an asshole, mm. but there no, it is. No, I got to stop telling lies with the Buha, so I had wow, to find a real up. one. That is incredible. You grew up in a sandwich shop. I was actually not born yet, so... Oh. What, did they I get rid get of the sandwich shop once they had you? No, they uh, they had my my dad picked up my mom when she had three kids with an idiot, and they uh, had three more kids. I just actually found out that we have a sister. They actually did not tell us that their firstborn they gave up for adoption forty years later over quarantine. Twenty three me. Well, she just I'm hit sure us up. there's some young lady out there just taking orders at a restaurant and going boo ha ha boo. <laughs> Where yeah, was, they are. They tell me. So where they, was your sister born? New Delhi? Ho, <laughs> ha, ha. There you go. So the sister Man just did 24 and Me and found, found. Yeah. Wow. So have you met her yet? Or yeah. You, she looks like me. It's weird as wow. fuck. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, my parents didn't tell us for 40 years. They've been holding on that guilt. Wow. So wow. after that happened, I was like, all right, you better tell us the truth now. Like, what else is going on out there? Where's the money buried? Did they give you any other information? No, that's it. That's it. Just a sister. Yep. What a crazy Star Wars-like twist that is. Sister. <laughs> you have a sister. So uh, what have you been doing during the pandemic? You have a lot of energy. You were working at Bubba Gump. What's going on now? Uh, lame shit. I've actually, funny you bring up Star Wars. I've actually read all the novels in Star Wars canon during quarantine. <laughs> Shout out to the curbside library. Wow, that's incredible. What do you uh, What do you do when you're reading books? Are you normally laying in bed? You uh, listen to music? Right now, I'm sitting in my car with the AC on because you can't really hang out anywhere. I don't like to read at home, right. so okay. it's pretty depressing. Yeah, what's your home situation like? Uh, I'm actually about to move out, so but I got a house, a couple guys. Okay, why are you moving out? Uh, we got one guy leaving, and then the other one was like, I don't want to be here either. And so I'm like, all right. So I'm probably going to have to go home for a minute. Where, where's home? Rancho Cucamonga. Whoa, Rancho Cucamonga. What do yeah. you? That sounds like something Joel would know a lot about. What do you know about Rancho Cucamonga? Hey! <laughs> okay, good lord. <laughs> really leaning on that this one. This is close. <laughs> okay, uh... Rancho Cucamonga is what? An the hour Inland east? Empire? Yeah. Yep. Anything that uh, you miss about Rancho Cucamonga? Just the fridge door water. The you know, you know you're getting water, water from the fridge yeah. door? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, Fancy. That's, yeah, that was amazing for a long time. Wow, for Christmas one year, I, I got a fridge door. <laughs> 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 Little things, okay? Absolutely incredible. What a piece of Give it up for Mrs. Claus. <laughs> there you go. Yes. My sweetums. There you go. Wow. Mikey, uh, how about your love life? What's that been like throughout this uh, pandemic? Nothing. Nothing really? at all. Yeah. That surprises there me. There might be somebody, but we'll see. Uh-oh. What is this? Did you just start dating? Are you about to go on a date? Someone that you would just have your eyes on? Someone that you're looking at through binoculars? Gone on a couple of dates, but you know, it's during quarantine. You're just... In the DMs, you know. Right. So you've gone on dates. Where have you? Uh, where have you gone on dates? To? Just walked around the beach. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's. Because cool. I'm. I mean, like, I'm not going to invite anybody to go to places and stuff like that. So, being outside. Wow. So how does it happen? Something like that. It just you meet her and then you're like, hey. You just try to be funny. <laughs> okay. You do the boohahs to her? <laughs> she already knows about it. She actually saw me on this show. so She saw you on this show. Yeah. See, that's okay. This is getting more and more interesting. <laughs> it's sort of something that I was half fishing for, hoping that maybe we helped this uh, this union come together a bit. She's a fan of Kill Tony? Yeah. All right. This is a keeper, dude. I'll tell you right now. This is a class act. Does she claim she's a nanny but really works at a strip club? Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I'm not that lucky. Oh, okay. Right. Is she a comedian or is it? She is a comedian. Whoa. Oh, we're finding we out go. more. Okay. It's on now. Dun, dun, dun. She's been dun, on the show. Oh, she's been on the show. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Do you ever show her your bits? Ho, ha, ha. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Right. She's lucky. Yeah. Absolutely. You got to take it slow. You got to take it slow. Like yeah. a good Christian boy. Very much. Very interesting. I don't believe in that, but yes. Right. You worship the devil himself. Hail Sagan. You read Star Easy. Wars novels and you worship the devil. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this has been fun, Mikey. Anything else crazy we need to know about? Anything else happening in life? No, that's about it. Doing comedy outdoors, not online. 
right? Court, have you ever seen Mikey before? This I just... haven't seen Mikey. I like Mikey a lot. Thank He's you. fantastic. You're funny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the boo- solid. Rock solid. Boohas and beats, my friend. Well wishes to you. We love Thank you, Mikey. You guys so Come much. back. Come Stay back safe. again soon. There he goes. The great. The powerful. I like Mike. the personality. I like the personality that guy is. Dreaming of a wife. There you go. Christmas. Christmas. We're knocking out one more real quick. Here he comes. It's Brandon Biederstad, everybody. Here comes Brandon. Bup, 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 shut up. Here he is, Brandon Biederstad. What's up? What's up? Here's Brandon Biederstad, everybody. Have you guys ever seen a, uh, a redheaded guy that's losing his hair and just been happy for him? You got to think that a balding ginger's just getting his soul back. Found out earlier this week that I'm related to Elizabeth Warren. I know what you're all thinking. How? <laughs> quarantine has been hard for me. The love life has been bad. Every day of quarantine, I get more horny and less fuckable. I've been uh, talking to my ex-girlfriend. She actually, I'm actually wearing a shirt right now that my ex-girlfriend got me. She wasn't a good fit either. My work has these signs that say, stay six feet away from each other or one jump rope's length. I think a better rule is I would like four jump ropes between me and anyone that uses a jump rope as a unit of measurement. And those people should be 60 jump ropes from a Chuck E. Cheese. Thank you very much. Brandon Biederstadt, doing jokes. He's got jokes, folks. Welcome back, Brandon Biederstadt. Very fun stuff. Thanks. Most of them are new. Yeah, that's great. The redheaded uh, balding, getting your soul back jokes, great. Elizabeth Warren, great. Fun, when- fun stuff. I've never heard of the jump rope thing before. I think my... I don't know. They printed it from the CDC, so I think it's like a wow. thing. But Where do yeah, you work? I work at a YouTube production company called FBE. Okay. What do you do there? I'm a production coordinator. Wow. With a belly button ring. Is that correct? That's you? You're the belly button ring I am ring the guy? dude with the belly button I gotta, ring. I got to let Court McCown see this. Uh, I, General Bogus, you mind zooming in on this? I've got uh, a different one. This is I wouldn't wear beautiful. the same one two times in a row. I want to real quick shout out the Oakland Raiders. Undefeated, baby. Okay, Let's okay, fucking okay. go. Wow. <laughs> it's a real belly button this ring. This is uh, the Oakland Raiders dangly. Oh, yeah. my God. It's an Oakland Raiders belly button ring? Yes. Oh, oh my God. Tough. It was stuck in his <laughs> belly <laughs> that button. That Oakland Raiders fans be like, not. hey, fool, what's up with that? Eh? <laughs> can we zoom in any farther? Is that as good? As, okay, that's as close as we can get, but that is a real... <laughs> Oakland Raiders. Dude, logo. they're the toughest. It is fucking so team. fucking gross to look at <laughs> the it. On Cholos that would kick your ass. Dude, it really it is. is. Dude, absolutely. It looks frightening. like looks like a jewel hanging out of an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Also, just, oh, there's a hair like on it. Something. Something. It looks it's meaty. Disgusting. Is your underwear inside out as well? Oh, it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> A lot of uh, big <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say the problem with your dating might start in the belly button ring. How is well, how is your love life right now? So the last time I was here we talked about the fuck shack. Um That's right. How'd that go? It went well. We yeah. fucked at it. I uh, we since then have stopped talking. It's kind of we broke up recently because she wants to be a stripper actually. Right. Wait. You're, you're the, the girl that you really liked is now getting into the stripping industry. That's what she's telling me. Yeah, but wow. and you're not you're not down with that. Is that what you're saying? I don't want to be dating someone who's stripping currently now. Wow. Yeah, hmm. she left. It's fine. We can say whatever. It's okay, we want General now. Bogus. You can <laughs> let them in. Everything's okay over there. You don't have to kick those people out. These are all. You probably no, inspired okay. her to strip with your belly button. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Christmas tree. Well, that's if she wants. She straight up said to me, she's like, will you pay my rent? Or should I start stripping? And yeah, I'm not going to pay for her fucking rent. So I'm like, these belly button rings aren't going to pay for themselves. <laughs> <All right. laughs> what an interesting maneuver and what a weird uh, position to put someone in. Are you going to pay my rent or should I start stripping? I think she's bluffing. 
It sounds like a bluff to me. Anybody agree with me on this? I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, bluff, right. Bluff, it bluff, sounds. It bluff. just sounds like a straight yeah, it up bluff. Yeah, seems like. Oh, what do you want me to be? A stripper? Pay my rent. You know, right. Like, that's she just. She has. Slug, right? She's yeah. done I mean, some she said, stripping. I'm gonna pay my rent, or I'm going to work at CVS. That's not what she said. Right. She's like, pay my rent. This right. isn't the first time she's dipped her toe in the stripping world. So I believe her. Well, there's no stripping right now, anyway. So. No, and that's why she wants to be a topless maid instead. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> was, so, what type of chest does she have? Are people even going to be excited? I'd give it a B cup. B cup. Okay. So, uh, so what really. are we talking about? Wow, I like her tits, but no, I would not pay. How, what about she her cleanliness? Be good at cleaning. Is, How you, about that? Yeah, she would be a good maid. She better be a good maid. They're not, trust me, they're not hiring topless maids, right? No one's buying topless maids during this corona a shit. A topless you know? yeah, maid? Exactly. Like, no, no one's spending yeah. money on that right. shit. You're only, better off getting a job as a belly butler. Yeah. A, 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 topless, <laughs> a topless B cup belly maid butler. is like a bootleg. No voice, fucking, no glasses, right. no lisp, <laughs> no accent. What's going on back there, Mrs. Claus? <laughs> I'm starting to think I married a man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Brandon, how long ago did she tell you that she's going to be a topless maid? This was two weeks ago. Has she, have you followed up with her since then? She has since told me that she's looked at other jobs, but I kind of thought it was like a convenient, like, breaking point. So she was bluffing. I've to I'm telling you that if stripping was a thing right now, no, she's not fucking bluffing. Okay. We're all right that she's not going to strip when she? there's no 25. 25, just going to jump right into the stripping business. Like I'm saying, she's kind of been doing it. Like before quarantine started. What do you mean she's kind she's been of an been escort? Doing it? She works at, she calls it karaoke. Uh huh. And what does she do at karaoke? Carry on a wayward song. Jesus. Hit it. Uh, she. Uh, thank you, you, thank you, Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, what's uh, what's hey, karaoke? Yo, this karaoke I'm, thing. I'm under the impression that she's wearing provocative outfits and nope. semi lap dancing, but like it's it's a different setup where you and your buddies like sit in a private karaoke room. Oh, oh, she's a uh, stripper. No, no, no. <laughs> what do That's they call it? Saying. They call it a. Uh, they they have a name for that. Taxi? I know. came no, here no, just no, to like talk to you Asian about clubs this, where yeah, they have it's like please. a taxi dance, like call them like taxi dancers or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she lip syncs, but with her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we call that. Uh, Carry on my way, we're done. So beat her stat. Yeah, what was the uh, what was the <laughs> sex like with this girl? It's pretty good. Um, she got one of those copper IUDs, and it has led to like the smelliest sex. Oh, of my life. Yeah. all right. I got one of those for Christmas one year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give it up for Mrs. Claus. Oh yes. my God. I don't blame her. Like I'm saying, we before the copper IUD, it smells like. So like what a is normal. it? What exactly does it smell like? Just like bad vagina? Or yeah, have you heard of vagiosis? It's yes. a doctor's fucking term for horrible smelling. Right. Vagina. Are, are you sure she's just got some? Doesn't have some cum left in there from some other guy? Okay, there she, you go. Ve she was very honest. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that's how it works, Red Band. I, no, seriously, I no, I know it, it, like a girl that she was just a fucking slut, and she always had the stinkiest pussy because she had you know fucked another guy previous that day, and you, you get some old cum in there. It's just it's like salmon, like a piece of salmon's been left in the car. Oh, these Same are the cum. girls that you're hooking up with. Her girls Don't that have fucked another guy. <laughs> <laughs> Scientifically, if another man comes inside of another woman, then there's leftover remnants. Then it will be smelly like Doctor the salmon of a southern red river. band strikes again, famously. Oh my God! How many times do you think you had sex with this girl after she had sex with other guys? Uh, <laughs> actually. That was the thing that ended it because it it was just disgusting. It was, <laughs> let's just say every time I put my penis inside her, it was very squishy. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah. No, that's the thing. Is like It's the same thing with me. The stripping kind of sucks. The smelly vagina. I was looking for a way out. Why is it made of copper? Like, Are they all copper? Copper kills sperm on contact. Yeah, really. it's kind of like wow. germs. You know, like we're... 
if you have those things that open the doors so you don't get uh oh you know okay. what I mean? like okay. the copper rings or whatever the fuck they're called. <laughs> all right yes what i've used that? pennies as contraception before there you go all right well brandon beater set we always learn so much about science and stuff when you're on the show and uh you know i always say out of all the com- male comedians with the belly button ring you are without a doubt one of the top 20 or 30 um <laughs> Uh, no, fun times, really great jokes tonight. How long have you been doing stand-up again? I'm at two and a half years. And, I mean, really, really good. Really great premises, especially. Jokes, g- great. I mean, you're doing it, man. Congratulations. Thank Writing you, during this pandemic isn't easy, and you're doing it. Brandon, Brandon B. Stuff. Comedy. Thanks, guys. Looking around the clock. Put them together, and what do you got? Hey. That's a jingle bell roar. Wow. All right. Excitingly, that is the end of the music portion of the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's time now for your final comedian of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy, an absolute god, an absolute legend, truly, truly one of my favorite human beings on the planet, a guy that I love, a guy that I look up to, a guy that I love working with. It's the great Michael Laird. They see me. Here he is. Everybody, come on, make some noise for Michael Lair. He's here, he's live. I don't want your noise. I don't want your noise. Tony, you disrespecting me by bringing corn on. What is this, the Silver Fox competition? Look at that. All right. (laughs) All right, so... It's been said that maybe I have an anger problem and I wanted to look into it. And I looked into it and it's not because of my disease and it's not because of my personal or professional life. I... D- discovered by looking inside myself that my anger comes from one source bad customer service and so to deal with that I decided I will no longer get mad I will get even and pay in change. Oh, shit. And we have been handed... Man, you ready? We've been handed scripts, and here we go. You guys ready to rock this the fuck? (laughs) 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 I... (laughs) Someone licks in the fingers... Are you good, Santa? All right. Five, six, seven, eight. Pay Pay in change. change. Nickels, dads, pennies, no quarters allowed. Pay Pay in change. change. Pay in change. Chroma. Rude to me. Rude to you. Rude to me. Rude to you. (laughs) I hope you brought your calculator. Pay in change. change. You want my two cents? Here's 92 cents. Pay in change. change. Iron don't lie. Here comes the heavy metal. Pay in change. change. Coins got you stuck like you screwed McDuck. Pay in change. change. <laughs> Pennies from heaven, more like hell. Pay in change. change. Me, Abraham. Drop dime on your ass. Drop nickels on your two. Pay Pay in change. change. (laughs) Three coins and fountain. A roll of dimes up your ass. Pay Pay in change. change. I hope you miss your bus because your cow and my change. 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 How long is this thing? And why don't we get any fun lines? Change. 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 Oh, is there a line for it? I feel some dimes for it. Pay change. Well, now he's just rhyming forming with forming. Pay change. 
A dollar fee, a sack of chewy, a page. You ain't friendly. Here's a wee penny. I like smoking nurses better. Hey and Jay. K Paso. 100 pesos. Hey and Jay. Shouldn't that have been Joel's line? Pay and change. Coins were minted in 1792. Now here's 1792 coins for you. Pay and change. Even the one about Helen Keller was better than this. Pay and change. I hope you like the vice president because here's some pence. Pay and change. Wow, in a script about change, there's a pence reference before an Obama reference. Pay and change. Copper is the color of your energy, and here's 311 pennies. Pay and change. It's written in the script that I don't like the script, but truly I hate this. Pay and change. Call me Obama, because I want change. There it is. Pay and change. Seriously, this is about three pages too long, Michael. <laughs> Are you a cop because you got a piggy bank? Okay. Pay All right. Pay You're a 9-11 conspiracy documentary. Loose change. Pay change. Everyone puts their fists in the air. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a stage direction. Well, I'm not doing it. Hey. hey. Wow! Absolutely <laughs> pretty <laughs> fresh. Hey, half of that was uh, the Christmas tree. She wrote it with me. Wow! Incredible writing. Uh, clearly, a lot of work put into it. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, a lot of pages. This is the thickest script we've ever been. Yeah, I know around. that I was uh, like I was supposed to act like I didn't like it, but I really did not like that at all. Yeah. Ironic that Jetski helped because I'm pretty sure it took an entire tree to print up all the pages. Oh, that's where my legs are gone. That's where my legs stopped. Oh, that's where your legs went. Oh, my God. (laughs) So funny. Oh, man. Michael, incredible stuff. Uh, Thank you. Another very fun uh, production that you put on. I love that you're taking advantage of the... um, of the wide parameters that you are afforded in your position. Don't down, I mean, it's um, in a playground, yep. you know? Absolutely. I'm loving every minute of it. You're goddamn right. You What's know. up with court? One, you look like Barbara Streisand's ex-husband, right? Which, which ex-husband? Is I don't Barbara know, Streisand everyone. Is looking ex-husband? But two, what are you, 85 and look 30? I mean, you're talking about doing bumps in the 70s? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how fucking old are you? I remember you? you, like 74. We were gacking out somewhere Dude. in El Reno, Oklahoma, oh, fucking man. having a good time. I thought I had enough gack, and I took too much gack, and I OD'd the gack. <laughs> That's it. Gackity gack. Can't go back. Gackity gack. Uh, no doubt. So, so what else has been going on, Michael Lair? Well, um, I have some observations about tonight. Okay. Um, the strip club stuff's interesting because Brian and I are very similar, almost in a Stephen King way. Oh. Like we look like each other through different years. I've been to hundreds of strip clubs and over 30 states and we're both the oldest besides Cord who Trump made a like deal it. with the devil or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but um, like in 2008 going to strip clubs was different than 05 different than two years ago So and then you learn reasonably what the strip clubs are different and uh, you have your favorites around the country. I was a real fixie. I knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Texas all the way. What are some Atlanta. of your favorites that you've been to off the top of Sam's your head? Sam's Hoffrow. 
UCLA. Okay. Oh. Um, no doubt. Um, East Chicago, Indiana, Industrial Strip. You go in there and a very kind Indiana gentleman. And let me preface this by saying I'm from Chicago. And before the financial collapse of 2008, you go to Chicago and it was like some daily like hardcore shit. And a strip club would be 100 bucks for an air dance and a ten dollar Budweiser and you go thirty minutes to Indiana and the nicest grandpa ever would greet you on the door and you'd be like, Oh what we have here are friction dances <laughs> It's like dry humping club. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you my favorite strip club story, it's real quick. Yeah. Uh, me and Rogan were at this strip club in I think Atlanta and this really hot stripper was talking this to me. This is what, and, like fifteen years ago? No, this is like ten years ago. Pink and, pony. And was she was like massaging me and and I, I thought she liked me one of those things and then uh she went away and this old woman that worked there i think she was like the manager was standing next to me and she she was wasted and she starts tapping me and she's like playing with my hair or something i thought it was the other stripper right. and then so i just kind of like she like leans her head into i thought she's going to kiss me so i was like all right fine i'll kiss that girl i start making out uh-huh. with her and i hear uh-huh. rogan and eddie bravo like crying laughing and they're taking photos of me i'm like what the fuck they're 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 killing it for me and i i open my eyes and it was this old woman probably like 82 years old that i was making out with wow. and joe has a video of it somewhere it's pretty disgusting and then you found out she had old cum in her pussy and yeah. you started going down well, i her. mean you started just you didn't smell the copper <laughs> Tony, I had a race story this week. A that race? I like. Did you say yeah. race story? Yeah. yeah. Race, race relations. Ra- ra- race relations are Things a big deal are, right now in America. I'm glad that you're talking about thank it. Thank you. Things are very tense right it's now. It's true. And I have opinions, and we all do, and we find that they um, sometimes conflict, and it's a very intense, hard time, and I was outside my apartment last night, and I was wheeling up to the ramp, and I saw ten young African American men and one woman, this is a woman, standing at the front door of my apartment. Looking in the directory to be let in. Ten black men, one white woman at the front yeah. of your building. Yep. Yes. Now, it's very clear they don't live. <laughs> right. I mean, that's clear. And I actually, during quarantine, told this story about another happening where one man, and I did not mention that he was African American, and he was, and uh, he said, can you let me in? And I said, no. And he said, pussy and word. And I said, I'm doing my duty to the residents. And there was racial tension. Because he was black. He was black. Right. And it was guttural, and you, it was there, and you don't want it. And so last night, ten black men and one black woman. Oh, it's a black woman or a white woman? Black woman. Oh, okay. Ten black men. Mean mugging, no smile, MC light, rough neck. I'm leaning in the morning, so I got to have a rough neck, all right? They have not a smile in the room. And I'm hanging back because I don't know how to deal with this situation right now. Because they're obviously trying to get let in. And I can roll up and let myself in and go, none of you can come in. And that feels weird, but of course that's what I should do. So I roll up the ramp, 
I'm in the middle of them and I go, guess who's letting you all in? <laughs> and I open the door and they don't know what to make of me like no one does, right? And I open the door on my app and I go, and I'm opening the door, someone's got a hold it for me. And I let them in, and they're still mean mugging and not breaking. They don't know what to make for me. They definitely don't live there. They're splitting, <laughs> <laughs> they're splitting up. And then, and then, I zoom away, and I hear one of the gentlemen go, I hear him go, do you know where the elevator is? And I turn back to him and I go, you know I ain't going to the stairs. <laughs> and they all started laughing. And then she like, when a mean mug, she smiled and I saw the princess that she was. So... <laughs> None of those people live <laughs> <laughs> <Right. in my laughs> in fact, half of them went in the <laughs> lobby while have one in the elevator. But I know I made a difference. Hopefully no one got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> or worse, but I don't think so. I think it was a plague house party. There you go. And you know what? Nope, nope, wait. When they see a guy like me again, maybe they won't be so tense. And maybe I chill the fuck out, and maybe we can figure out this ugly shit. Cause it ain't gonna happen anyway, but being fucking <laughs> human. That's beautiful. Michael right on, Lair. brother. That's beautiful. And it turns out, you know what? I actually know how this story ends. It turns out they were there to help a white family. They were helping them move. They, I saw them leaving. I was actually in front of your place. I saw that group of 10 black guys walking out with television sets and things like that and stereo yeah. equipment. Yeah. I think they were just helping the white family move. A lot of disability yeah. <laughs> equipment, you know, wheelchairs and whatnot. Michael Lair, I love you more than I love life itself. You Thank are the you best. So Michael much. Lair, comedy dot com. Michael Lair, comedy on everything. He's doing things, looking good. Young Buck, Michael Lair. Let's check out the drawing from Ryan J. E. Belt tonight. That's another episode of Kill Tony with zero audience here. Look at that. What an incredible fucking drawing. Unbelievable artist. Everybody's there. I'm there. Special Christmas edition. I'm a jack in the box on this one. The great Court McCown looking studly as always. A very accurate portrayal of him. And uh, the band is uh, very Christmassy Christmas characters. I love the style on this one. Very fun. Very cinematic. Adventurous RyanGBelt.com for every single print. Make sure you check that one out. And every print that's ever happened in the history of the show. Guys, how about a hand for the great Court McCown joining us tonight? Court's on social media at Court McCown. That's C O R T M C C O W N. Correct. Yeah. All it, right. Yeah, there you go. Um, and uh, what else is going on, Court? Tell us more. Anything else? Not a whole lot going on right now. COVID's still keeping me indoors, so we'll see. We'll get the golf game. You and but I my God, leads. this fucking guy drives the ball. What did you say your farthest drive was, even with the wind behind you that one time? We did 367 one day. 367. Wow. Yeah. I hit one 260 today. I was very excited about very it. Very good. You're I coming won. along, buddy. I hit You're... one 260 today. You're going to get there. You'll get there. Uh... How about a hand for the leader of the band, the great Jeremiah Watkins, everybody? Yes, there's the Venmo. The Venmo the at Jeremiah Watkins. He's what? been a very good boy this year. Why don't you year. tell these people about the uh, creative stuff that you've been doing, the work that you've been doing instead of uh, the Venmo? 
Uh, Jeremiah Wonders, uh, doing a lot of fun episodes on there. Did a, uh, an episode with Josh Ademeyer's Eric Griffin called The Store Sessions. And then there's an episode of Dan Soder of Jeremiah Wonders and some other great ones coming your way. And Eating Breakfast with Jeremiah, your favorite... Favorite new show on YouTube, <laughs> it Tony. Is, it is. I just can't get enough of it. I just watch it and eat breakfast right alongside you. Every William day. Montgomery, <laughs> recent guest on the show. Maybe Tony. Who knows? Yeah, no. Uh, Jetski Johnson, everybody was here. Oh, 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 <laughs> she, oh, oh, oh. She's making unbelievable ornaments using her creativity and work ethic to make things for you with her hands, the fans. I bought five of them total already. Jetskijohnson.com. She makes them all summer glass, summer plastic. You get to decide. She's an absolute stone cold assassin. I love her to death. What else, Jetski? Yeah, check out my website, Jetskijohnson.com. <laughs> this thing, like, I mean, by the way, if like we were all video game characters, you know how like some people have this and some people are agile or strong or this and that. Like, if we were video game characters on this show, my prediction would be the jet ski would have the highest level, perhaps, of likability, right? That would be an extremely strong oh, suit. Yes. But you, as a Christmas tree <laughs> with green paint on your face, it's incredible. This is like a, the most likable thing I've ever seen in my it's life. Like I'm glowing. It's incredible. <laughs> Jetskijohnson.com. How about another hand for jet ski, everybody? I know you're not going to believe this. I found it to be shocking myself. I just got this report. I just read it. But the entire time, I thought it was Mrs. Claus. It was actually Joelberg Joel Jimenez. What an acting job. I mean, incredible. Incredible acting chops. That's, That's Joelberg. Right. What's Great going tits. on, Joel? Uh, you know, happy to be here. We just did some recording with Jeremiah, so that'll come out soon. That was really fun. I'm um, happy to see Mikey McKernan. I've known him for like eight years now. It's great to see him. Um, He's mostly sorry. What else, Joel? That's right. Don't buy your kids a fucking word processor for Christmas. There That's he is. it. I love you. The guys. Mostly Sorry podcast available everywhere. The great Chroma Chris, master musician, batted a thousand tonight. Chroma, what do you think about tonight's episode? We really slayed it tonight, Tony. <laughs> oh. You son of a bitch. You did it again. He with a walk off slayed it joke. Uh, Red Band, what else is going on? Uh, check out DeathSquad.tv. Become a Patreon member for the Brothers in Curse of David, Lucas, and William Montgomery's podcast. And check out Dead Air with Brian Holtzman, that's, DeathSquad.tv. That's right. And I have a Patreon, too. Roast Masterclass. And boy, are we knocking out episodes like crazy. I just did one with a, a writing guru, Connor McSpadden. This guy is from the future. You might not even know about him yet, but you are going to. Uh, this kid could make fun of a fucking uh, brick and destroy. He is unbelievably talented. Um, and uh, I'm excited about what's going on over there. That's patreon.com slash Hingecliff. And we have a lot of exciting stuff. I think you're going to look back at this moment uh, a, a week after this episode comes out and be very surprised at what happens with the state of Kill Tony from here. So we will talk to you soon. Good night, everybody.